it's always best to hold your tongue in Hollywood. After all, a single slip-up can forever tarnish a celebrity's reputation. Don't believe us? Take a look at these vintage celebrity interviews. They're unbelievably awkward in every way, so prepare to cringe. Charlie Sheen had a rough 2011. That year, he was fired from the CBS sitcom Two and a Half Men, and there's nothing funny about suddenly finding yourself unemployed. There's also nothing funny about Two and a Half Men. I said I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I am sorry. I am. I am. All right, I'm not. <laughs> According to The Telegraph, Sheen was fired from the show because of an out-of-control drug habit. An awkward 2011 interview sheds light on his frayed mental state at the time. After months of erratic behavior, an interviewer told Sheen that a lot of fans suspected he was bipolar. Sheen's response? I'm bi-winning. I win here and I win there. Now what? After a discussion about drug use, Sheen claimed he was clean. I just answered to a higher calling, and it happened in a blink of an eye. But the most notorious soundbite from the interview has to be this. Because I'm me, I'm different. I just have a different constitution, I have a different brain, I have a different heart, I have a different, you know, I get tiger blood, man. No matter how many years go by, this interview between actor Jesse Eisenberg and blogger Romina Puga will never not be awkward. Yeah, that one. I think what you're doing is you're putting your thumb under your pointer finger. Eisenberg was promoting his 2013 film Now You See Me, but the interview went south before Puga finished asking her first question. Eisenberg gets conspicuously prickly after she refers to his co-star Morgan Freeman by only his last name. So Freeman plays a magic debunker. Freeman? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> Freeman? Yeah. What, are you on a baseball team with him? Yeah, he's yeah. a buddy of mine. Okay. And that's just the tip of this particularly chilly iceberg. Seemingly feeding off Puga's nervousness, Eisenberg says to her, Um, do you know the, um, comedian Carrot Top? Yes, horrible. Well, um, you were like the uh, Carrot Top of interviewers. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Following the interview, Puga wrote, So I was just humiliated by Jesse Eisenberg. The five-minute interview was more like self-esteem butchering. Years later, Eisenberg told Business Insider he doesn't enjoy doing press, as though that wasn't already abundantly clear. He explained, 90% of it is concerned that I'm going to misspeak because I have in the past, and that seems to be the overriding narrative regardless of the intention or relevance. So that's a lot of what this is. Way to let yourself off the hook, Eisenberg. Back in 2005, an alarmingly giddy Tom Cruise appeared on The Oprah Winfrey Show, quite literally jumping for joy at the mere mention of his then-girlfriend, actress Katie Holmes. <laughs> And who can forget when Cruz expressed his love for Holmes by jumping up and down on Oprah's couch? We can't. Tom, we've never seen you behave this way before. I know. <laughs> Have you ever felt this way before? <laughs> the epic talk show appearance has spawned countless memes and was notably satirized in the otherwise unmemorable Scary Movie 4. Throughout the very out there appearance, Winfrey keeps declaring, He's gone. I've never seen him this way. <laughs> He's gone, Katie. He's gone. So this is beyond smitten. This is gone. I'm standing on your couch. Yeah, I know. This is gone. <laughs> this is gone. Cruz and Holmes got hitched in 2006, but the marriage didn't last. Holmes filed for divorce in 2012, asking for primary residential custody of their daughter, Surrey. In a showbiz career spanning multiple decades, Madonna has perfected the fine art of dissing her fellow pop stars. In 2012, she said of Lady Gaga's music, It feels, uh, reductive. Is that good? Look it up. Madonna's shade was just a touch more subtle during a now legendary interview at the 1995 MTV Video Music Awards. As Madge dutifully answers Kurt Loder's questions, a makeup compact suddenly whizzes past her. You, you may say it's a um, reflection of that, but it's, um, it's also... Loder and Madonna look down below, and guess who they see? Whole frontwoman Courtney Love. Loder is rather keen to have Love join in on all the fun. Madonna, quite clearly, is not. Come on up. <laughs> Should we let her come up? Yeah. No, don't, please. Come on, Courtney. 
As Love acts out, a helpless Madge mumbles. Courtney Love is in, in dire need of attention right now. Later on, awkwardness reigns supreme as Love sits with Madonna and Loder. Sorry I insulted you. What? Yes, I was in her. a bad mood. <laughs> but you said something mean about me that day. Then there's a lot of this kind of thing. No, no, oh. I interrupted you. I'm in the no, 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 it's no, okay. I feel it's a pig. No, no, I go ahead. I'm going to leave you too. too. I ruined my Mac compact. And, um, it's an absolutely iconic segment that never fails to make us cringe. No, I don't want to sit in your chair. Well, he's not a it's, like a, it's like a throne. Plenty of folks are familiar with Jerry Seinfeld's exceptionally uncomfortable run-in with Kesha in 2017. He denies her a hug not once, not twice, but three times. When you're tired, because people are tired most of the time. Kesha, I love you so much. Oh, thanks. Can I give you a hug? No, thanks. Please? No, thanks. A little one. Yeah, no, thanks. Oh. <laughs> Fans were horrified, and so was Kesha. She later told radio station Hits One. I had a moment where I was thinking to myself, wow, maybe I should stop trying to hug everyone and, like, attack them. Just, he's not a huggy guy. That's fine. Meanwhile, Larry King had his own painfully awkward encounter with Seinfeld in 2007. While interviewing the comedian on CNN's Larry King Live, the talk show host unwisely asked about the end of Seinfeld's hit sitcom on NBC. They didn't cancel you. You canceled them. You're not aware of this? No, I'm, I'm asking you. You think I got canceled? Granted, King probably should have known that Seinfeld chose to end the series. In fact, he reportedly turned down a lucrative offer from NBC to the tune of $5 million per episode. Seinfeld's withering sarcasm is on full display during the clip. This go little down. CNN? Don't most shows go down a little? Most people do also. You would. But... <laughs> that is some high-octane awkwardness right here. When Keeping Up with the Kardashians launched in 2007 on the E! Network, many viewers became obsessed with the family. Around season four, famed journalist Barbara Walters put the entire clan on ABC's 18th annual 10 Most Fascinating People special. Clearly, the Kardashians had already earned some haters at this point, because Walters opened her segment with, I have never heard more anger and dismay than when we announced that the people you're about to see were on our list. Oh, dear. Sitting down with Kim, Courtney, and Khloe Kardashian and momager Kris Jenner, Walter starts her interview with the following blunt statement. You don't really act. You no. don't sing. You don't dance. You don't have any, forgive talent. me, any talent. But we're still entertaining people. After some back and forth, Chloe actually ends up agreeing with the host. Like, none of us think we have talents. Like, none of us think we could sing or act or dance. Oh, hey, fair enough. But fast forward a few years, and the Car Jenners are more famous than ever. Kylie Jenner and Kim K have their own makeup empires. Kendall was the highest paid model in 2018, and Chloe launched Revenge Body, her own fitness reality TV show. As for Courtney, in 2019, she debuted Poosh, a Gwyneth Paltrow-style lifestyle blog. So they aren't singing and dancing, but whatever they are doing seems to be working. Ben Affleck is a bona fide Hollywood fixture. The actor-turned-director has been attached to countless high-profile films over the years. But in 2017, fans were intensely focused on a pair of old interviews that suddenly resurfaced. At the height of the Harvey Weinstein scandal, Affleck spoke out against the disgraced movie mogul on his Facebook page, writing, I am saddened and angry that a man who I worked with used his position of power to intimidate, sexually harass, and manipulate many women over decades. The additional allegations of assault that I read this morning made me sick. Shortly after he posted the message, fellow A-lister Rose McGowan called out Affleck on Twitter. She claimed he knew all about the allegations made against Weinstein. I told him to stop doing that. You said that to my face. You lie. Around the same time, One Tree Hill alum Hillary Burton shared her own Affleck horror story from 2003, explaining that the actor acted inappropriately during a TRL interview. You're always like, I'm just free-spirited. Uh. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> and he wraps his arm around me and comes over and tweaks my left boob. Nice to see you. <laughs> In an October 2017 tweet, Burton opened up about the incident. Girls, I'm so impressed with you brave ones. I had to laugh back then so I wouldn't cry. The next day, Affleck apologized for his behavior in a tweet. I acted inappropriately toward Miss Burton, and I sincerely apologize. 
Things went from bad to worse for Affleck when another old interview started making the rounds. In that one, Affleck is canoodling with Canadian interviewer Anne-Marie Lozique of Box Office. During a 2004 press tour for Jersey Girl, Affleck asks Lozique, Well, you usually show a lot more cleavage than this. What's the, know, what's the story? Why are you covering it up today? Well, it's Sunday morning. It's Sunday morning. <laughs> At another point in the interview, this happens. I like the perfume. They like this. <laughs> They would like it better if you did the show top at the station, wouldn't they? After the video resurfaced, Lozik told Entertainment Weekly, I want to make it very clear. It was strictly for the cameras while the cameras were on. While they were off, he was actually very proper and we talked about many things. Regardless of what went on behind the scenes, what happened while the cameras were on is certifiably squirm-inducing. Agreed? Oh, oh let's do the interview. we can do the interview like this. Okay. Oh, you're, oh, you're really sweet, <laughs> Being in a committed relationship with Kiss bassist Gene Simmons must be hard. After all, he claims he's vetted down around 5,000 women in his lifetime. So we have to give it to Simmons' wife, Shannon Tweed, the mother of their two children. In 2011, she held her own during an exceedingly awkward interview on The Joy Behar Show. In the wake of cheating allegations against Simmons, Tweed remarks, He's a pig and I don't like it. He's a pig. Okay. And, I'm, and I'm done. <laughs> You're finished with him? At one point, Simmons seemingly tries to let himself off the hook. Men are basically 12-year-old boys who... There you go, giving yourself company. Later on, Behar tries getting to the root of the matter. You have been together a long time. You have your um, philandering ways. Is that the there one I'm go. hearing? I like that Is it word. true, Jane? Then Behar alludes to Simmons' various sexual trysts. How's your back, Jane? <laughs> <laughs> my, my back is good, my, sh my schmeckel not so much. That's very nice of you to joke about. It's a joke! <laughs> and with that, Tweed gets up and leaves the interview. Please come back here. No, no, you joke about it, and it's not funny. Well, I'm trying to make you feel a little more comfortable. So it's possible. So that happened. But because love is a wild and crazily unpredictable beast, Simmons and Tweed wound up getting married a few months after the interview. In May 2018, Simmons seemed to admit his wrongdoing, telling Us Weekly, The astonishing thing about women is, I don't know why, but you forgive our trespasses over and over every single day. Guys wouldn't do that. Jonah Hill seems quite pleased with how his acting career is going. In a 2013 interview with Rolling Stone, he mused, I've done one of the biggest challenges you can do in Hollywood, which is transition from being a comedic actor to being a serious actor, and I'm really prideful of that. Perhaps that statement has something to do with an interview he conducted with his Moneyball co-star Brad Pitt. Posing a fan question, Hill asks, If you could adopt a personality trait or mannerism from one of your Moneyball co-stars, what would it be? Hill points out that Pitt can pick literally any co-star, including a certain special someone. No, any one try. of them. If, if they're sitting uh, right here, uh, that's, yeah. that could be one of them. Pitt's response? Yeah, no, yeah, no, I gotta go with a serious actor. Okay. Ouch. Hill seems understandably uncomfortable following the exchange, rendering the rest of the interview rather difficult to watch. These days, Hill can probably laugh about it. After all, his Moneyball performance earned him an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Plus, in 2018, he starred in the Netflix drama Maniac and made his directorial debut with the 2018 coming-of-age film Mid-90s. As Hill would tell The Guardian in 2019, All actors are typecast, but I tried to change whatever pigeonhole I was in because I didn't want to get stuck there. The 60s were an altogether different time, with the concept of modern feminism only slowly creeping into the mainstream. Meanwhile, James Bond, portrayed by actor Sean Connery, was the epitome of masculinity on the silver screen. I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. In a 1965 interview with Playboy, the Scottish actor was asked, how do you feel about roughing up a woman, as Bond sometimes has to do? Connery's response is a jaw-dropper. I don't think there's anything particularly wrong about hitting a woman. If a woman is a bitch or hysterical or bloody-minded continually, then I'd do it. What's worse, Connery didn't back down from that statement during a 1987 interview with Barbara Walters. The famed journalist made sure to bring up the old quote, asking Connery, Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I didn't love that. I haven't changed my opinion. In fact, Connery even says, I don't think it's 
that bad. I think that it depends entirely on the circumstances. As to what situation would merit slapping a woman, Connery offers this response. They don't want to have the, the, the last word, and you give them the laugh, last word, but they're not happy with the last word. They want to say it again. A clearly gobsmacked Walters asks, What if she gives you a good slap back? Well, then you get into another area. I mean, uh, then maybe she's getting to like it, and then it becomes something else. I don't know. <laughs> that interview was awkward when it first aired in 1987, and it's beyond awkward now. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.